Hello guys, Clay's here with another map on basic CT setups. Today we're going to be having a look at overpass. I have broken the map into two areas this time, with long and mid, and B. The majority of the CT setups on overpass will be something like 2A, 3B, or 3B on 2 and A. These setups will depend if you want to be playing more aggressive on connector and mid, or you want to be playing more on B, depending what read you have on the T's in the round. Let's go in the first setup so we can have a look at how it all works. This is the most common setup you'll see in most teams across the board, with 2 on A, 3 on B. Taking a look at how the 3 B players are set up here is very important. This setup is known as a bait and switch setup. If you don't know what that is, simply one player gets contact and the other one peeks to help them out, while the first player gets contact initially will hide again. Making it very hard for the enemy to hit either of you as you'll be keeping peeking and non-peeking, so it's very hard for the T to react and get control and win a duel. As you can see from the angles each player is holding, the player on the pillar will be moving to help the monster player on wood if he gets contact. If he doesn't, he'll just continue to watch short. To use this strategy in the best way possible, if the player who on the pillar gets contact from the T's on short, then whoever is on wood in this situation can just turn around and watch the push from the T's, while the player on pillar can then switch and watch the wood's player back. The third player sitting here will just be more extra support on either of these two positions if needed, and will also be the first rotate onto the A site if needed. With the two players on A, it is very important that you play close or around each other most of the time. You don't want to be given the T's an opening kill or or an entry leaving you in a rough situation in a 4v5. As you can see from this first example you will have an AWPA looking in bathrooms while a rifler is holding close watching his walk up. This will allow to take off lots of pressure on the AWPA if he misses or if he's getting rushed down by multiple T's. Here is another example as well of another mid setup with only 2 and A with the AWPA holding a very tight angle here while again the rifler is playing very close to him let you know so make sure you do that so he cannot be rushed down and ran down by any T's because if he gets the first kill on a T then the rest of the T's might try push him and pressure him as much as they can to try trade the kill as fast as possible. So it's very important as the rifler there you are ready for any T's to potentially rush and help him out as the best as you can. Now going into more of a less common setup, yet very effective if done correctly and everyone knows how to play each position they are holding and what you are doing in this strategy. You can play more aggressive on the side that you have three CTs on due to having an extra player. Taking control of early connector is a great idea here. Also, giving the third player mid a flash if he's an AWPA, obviously, if he wants to peek, get an entry kill, that would also be great. And he doesn't have to worry too much about falling back because he has two CTs relatively close to him, allowing for him to not be caught off by any T's pushing. As you can already see in this example, the two B players are playing very passive and much further back here. This is to play more for a retake if anything than contesting the first hit that comes from the T's having one player on graffiti and one player on the pipe in pit allows for you to hold all the positions from a very further range allowing for you to potentially stay alive even longer and allow for the CT's to rotate onto the B site in more time. Something else you can do if we go back and look at the 2 on A and 3 on B setups again is have two players on this long position and leaving mid open completely. Only do this a few rounds and a half as it can be very risky giving a lot of space middle. Depending on what the T's do can result in a round loss completely if they all just 5 walk up mid and don't make any sound. The idea of these two players on long is that the rifle who is posted on the rock position can just watch bathrooms here and make sure the AWPA doesn't get pushed by any riflers that may be there. The AWPA will be on top of the wall watching long. This also creates for an anti-flash position for the player on the rock as the majority of teams will flash the AWPA off long before peeking, allowing for the rifler to possibly swing or peek behind him to get the kill. As you can see, I've put one of the B players on graffiti this round. That is because he can be there to listen for sound for middle. Okay, so that player just needs to be listening out if he hears any footsteps or any potential mid presence at all from the T's. He can let his players on long know about that and he can be the first rotate very quickly up to the A site if needed. I hope this video helped you out and gave you and your team some new ideas of what you can try out on Overpass. If you have any suggestions of ways I can improve these series or just maps you would like to see, just let me know, you know, you can leave a comment, that always helps me out. As always guys, it's Glaze here, thank you very very much for watching, I hope you have a great great day.